Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the general structure of amino acids. You should then be able to describe how a peptide bond can be formed or broken. Now proteins are among the most important molecules in biology. Proteins carry out a vast number of functions in living organisms and all proteins are formed from amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids found in biology. So we're going to start by looking at the structure of amino acids. I'm showing you the general structure of an amino acid here. Now I should point out that this is not a specific amino acid. This is the general structure shared by all amino acids and you definitely need to learn this structure. Now there are three main parts to an amino acid. We've got the amine group here and the carboxyl group here. These two groups are the same for every amino acid. And finally we've got the R group. Now the key idea you need to understand is that the R group is different for each of the 20 amino acids. I'm showing you two different amino acids here and remember that you don't need to learn these specific examples. In the case of glycine the R group is a hydrogen atom and in the case of alanine the R group is a carbon atom bonded to three hydrogen atoms. Now in the exam you could be asked to name the elements present in proteins. Looking at the general structure of an amino acid we can see that they contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. Some amino acids also contain the element sulfur. Coming up we're going to look at how amino acid molecules can bond together by forming a peptide bond. Okay I'm showing you here two amino acids side by side. In this case these amino acids are both glycine but this applies to any amino acids. Now these two amino acids can react together and form a chemical bond and I'm showing you that here. The bond formed is called a peptide bond and you do need to learn that. As you can see we've also formed a molecule of water so this is an example of a condensation reaction and we saw condensation reactions when we looked at polysaccharides. The molecule that we formed is called a dipeptide as it contains two amino acids bonded together. This reaction takes place in ribosomes which is where proteins are synthesized in cells. The reaction is catalyzed by a specific enzyme and we'll look at that in a later video. Now if we join three or more amino acids then we make a polypeptide and I'm showing you that here. As you can see we've made one molecule of water for every peptide bond that we formed. Now I should point out that polypeptides often consist of hundreds of amino acids joined together. Okay so as we've seen a peptide bond is formed in a condensation reaction and a molecule of water is produced. Now we can reverse this reaction and break the peptide bond and to do that we need to add back a molecule of water. This is called a hydrolysis reaction and this reaction is carried out by protease enzymes in the digestive system. Okay I want to end on one final point. As we've seen when a large number of amino acids are joined together then we call this a polypeptide. So what's the difference between a polypeptide and a protein? In order to be classed as a protein a polypeptide has to fold into a complex three-dimensional shape. Once a polypeptide is folded into the correct shape it can then carry out its function for example as an enzyme or a hormone and at this point we'd refer to it as a protein molecule. Many proteins actually consist of several different polypeptides forming a large and complex molecule and proteins often contain other molecules helping them to carry out their function. A good example of this is haemoglobin which we look at in a later video. In the next video we're going to start looking at the different levels of protein structure.